Hello and welcome to this self-help video presented by Planet Cutting Edge Solutions. Today's video is focusing in on some of the error messages seen in Cabinet Vision and S2M and to provide you with some helpful troubleshooting techniques you can use to rectify them. The errors that we will be looking into today are Error 17 Error 4060 the SQL service error and errors 52 and 75 from the S2M Center. The first error that we will be investigating is error 17. This is perhaps the most common error and occurs usually when the name of the computer has been changed from the original name at the time that Cabinet Vision was installed. This error will likely appear during the launch process of Cabinet Vision. By clicking on the OK button, you will remove this error and Cabinet Vision will close. This is because Cabinet Vision does not have a clear path to the database, as the name of the database uses the name of the computer. Since the name has been changed, this path is no longer viable. The solution to this error is quite simple. As the name of the computer has been changed, we need to provide this new name for the SQL path. Alternatively, we can use the universal name of local host so that in the future, if the name of the computer changes, we will not need to modify the SQL path again. In order to modify the SQL path and to rectify error 17, we need to navigate to the registry settings for Cabinet Vision. We access the registry by clicking on the Windows button and typing the word RegEdit. We then select this run command and this will launch the registry. Using the fields on the left we need to navigate to HKEY LOCAL MACHINE SOFTWARE WOW 6432 NODE CABINET VISION SOLID 11 SETTINGS and then MATERIAL. From here we double click on the X Material SQL path and modify the name as follows localhost backslash solid. You can then click OK and close the registry editor. You can now launch Cabinet Vision and error 17 will no longer appear. Error 4060 will appear if the CX materials or the CX system data databases have become unreachable or are offline. This error will also present itself at the splash screen of Cabinet Vision after the program has attempted to launch. The solution to this error is also quite simple, however it does require a specific series of steps to rectify. As the required database is now offline, the solution is to simply bring it back online we do this by clicking on the OK button. This will remove the error pop-up window and Cabinet Vision will close. We need to open Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio in Administrator mode. This is the important step. If this application is not opened in Administrator mode, you will not be able to bring the required database back online. To access Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio, we click on the Windows button and type SSMS. We then right click on the application and select Run as Administrator. Once the application has launched, a pop-up window will appear. On the pop-up window, click the Connect button and we are now able to bring the database back online and rectify the error. We do this by following these steps. Using the left sidebar, click on the small plus symbol next to the databases folder. Locate the offline database. Right click on the offline database and select tasks. Click on the bring online option and a pop-up window should appear telling you that it has been successful. You can close this pop-up window and then close down Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. 
You are now able to relaunch Cabinet Vision version 11 and the error will no longer appear. The SQL Services error. This error simply lets the user know that the SQL database has stopped running. This is usually due to the internet connection being interrupted. Unlike error 17 and error 4060, which will display once Cabinet Vision has launched, this error prevents Cabinet Vision from launching at all and will pop up once you have attempted to do so. The solution to this error is also quite easy. As the SQL server has stopped, we simply need to restart it and the error will be removed. We do this by clicking on the Windows button and typing the word Run. We then click on the application and type SQL Server Manager 11.msc and click OK. This will launch the SQL Server Configuration Manager and from here we are able to restart the SQL Server Solid Instance. Using the left taskbar we select the SQL Server Services and then using the main window we select the stopped SQL Server Solid Instance, right click and select Start. Once this is done and you can see that the SQL Server Solid Instance has been restarted, you can close the SQL Server Configuration Manager and relaunch Cabinet Vision version 11. Errors 52 and 75 from the S2M Center usually go hand in hand with each other and will appear once you have attempted to run off NC code and labels. These two errors indicate to the user that the output path requested for the NC code and labels to be sent to is, in most cases, not set with the correct permissions for new files to be written to. The solution to these errors is to allow Cabinet Vision to both read and write files to the desired output location. We accomplish this by firstly checking that our user account control settings are set to the bottom of the slide bar. This will stop any pop-up windows requesting administrator authentication to proceed. Once the user account control settings are set to the bottom of the slide bar, we then need to find the desired output location using the Windows File Explorer. In this demonstration, the desired output location was located in the C drive, under Cabinet Vision, and the one CNC code folder. Once I have located the desired output file, I right-click on the file and go to Properties. From the Properties tab, I go to the Security tab, and click on the Edit button in the center of the window. We now want to add a new group, or username, and we do this by firstly clicking on the Add button and then typing everyone into the blank field in the pop-up window. I can then click OK and now that I can see that everyone is available I want to allow full control for the everyone user and apply these changes to the folder. Once these changes have been applied I can exit the security window by clicking OK and the same for the properties window. Now that the permissions for the desired output folder have been changed and Cabinet Vision can now make changes within these folders, I can return to the S2M Center and successfully output my required code and labels with no further error messages.